Kia ora, Canterbury and welcome to Canterbury Live on Monday the 5th of October. I'm Andrea Allen and thank you very much for tuning in today. Hey, last week of the school holidays, a little tip, if you're heading into town and looking for somewhere to go for lunch, yesterday we went to the C1 Cafe. Now it is located in the Allison Video uh, Land building and very cool indeed. If you can remember back to the Arthur Barnett days where the money used to go through the cylinders, you know, the tubes and the roof and whoosh, bing, and there it is, that's how their fries and little sliders arrive to your table or close to it. Isn't that cool? It's called a pneumatic system. So if you're looking for something fun, entertaining for the children, head along to C1. And no, I didn't get any curly fries free for that. It's just a really cool thing to do in the last week of uh, school holidays. Rightio, happy birthday. If it's your birthday today, many, many happy returns. Rightio, you are sharing it with some famous people. There goes one now. That is Kate Winslet. Yes, and there she is as Rose in Titanic. Love it or hate it, it did certainly shoot her to stardom, that movie. Um, she, of course, yes, is an actress. She's won um, Academy Award, three Golden Globe Awards. Um, but I like to remember her back here in Christchurch, though. Remember that she actually played a lead in Heavenly Creatures, Peter Jackson's movie. But there she is. She is 40 today and looking radiant. Next up, Bob Geldof. He actually looks quite clean and probably smell free here. He can be a bit woofy, apparently. Um, that is Sir Bob Geldof, and he was born Robert Frederick Zenon. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Lead singer of uh, the band of the Boomtown Rats. You can hear that here, I Don't Like Mondays. And that song was actually written after, uh, I suppose this last week, with um, a big um, killing that happened in a school, high school, where a girl went to school on Monday and killed many students. He, although, is well known though for his um, activism with um, Band Aid and Live Aid, Ethiopia, all his work there. Very cool, many happy returns to you, Sir Bob Geldof. You are 64, unbelievable. And last but not least, very cool, there he is, Brian Johnson. He is the lead singer of Akadaka, ACDC. He's 68 and he's still rocking. Of course, they're coming to New Zealand. Um, he does, he fronts, of course, Australian rock band, but he is an Englishman. He loves cars, loves cars. He's been on Top Gear a few times, there he is, with one of his bevies there. His favourite car, though, is his uh, Rolls-Royce Phantom. He said you should have a chauffeur for a Rolls Royce, but why would you? Because it's just fun driving them. So many happy returns to you, Brian. Radio giveaways. We have some wonderful books to give away. And down here we have Maeve Binchies, A Few of the Girls. It's a collection of stories around Ireland. And next to it is Born to Fight, UFC fighter Mark Hunt. It's all about him. It's sort of like the modern day Rocky. Very cool books. To win these, all you need to do is go through to our website, ctv.co.nz, to the competition page, and you could indeed be a lucky winner. We have some winners to announce. Craig Adams, wonderful local lad, doing fantastic things in the country music world. We have some CDs of his to give away, and the lucky winners are Chris Vanderwater, John Ruxton, James Sparks, and Anne Mansfield. The CD will be here with also a lovely A4 of Craig himself. And last but not least, the wonderful Purple Patch gift basket. We had a lot of entries for this, and it's, I'm sorry you couldn't all receive something, but one very lucky person will be taking it home for their baby, and that is Logan Brown. So congratulations to you, Logan. You have this to take home with you, and Marianne will be in touch. Radio on today's show, we are joined by... Maybe John, maybe Ponch, Chips, remember Chips? Well, the motor, uh, motor Patrol are here and we do have, in the studio, a bike. I know, it's very cool indeed. We meet the blue bearded lady. Does she actually have a beard? Brent Lattimore talks to us about living within our means. Ira Mitchell Kirk has a wonderful new painting that you can see over my shoulder. It is all about Wanaka. Very cool indeed. And Karen Deegan talking about relationships, the good, the bad, and the ones probably you should get rid of. But first up, she's busy fluffing around to the side of me. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola Freya, you did that so well, love. Oh. You did that so well. And you can actually push out the basket. Oh, We've given that away. You. We can oh. do that sort of stuff. Should be we production. Well, it should be production, shouldn't it? <laughs> it should be shot, shouldn't it? How are you, Nicola? I'm good, thanks. And you're surviving the school holidays? Oh, yes. Great time. Good time. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. There's no lunches. I think no. like that. God, <laughs> no lunches. Lunch no. depressing. No, you're trying to get people out of bed early on in school morning. Sleep in, so. Hey, now you are embracing, coming up to Christmas, the whole word masterclass. Yeah. And about reading labels. Yeah. 
What's that all about? Well, you know, we're busy at the supermarket. We have a quick hour to get in and out and get everything done. But an if hour? You, Jeez, yeah, you know. <laughs> if you're lucky. If you're lucky. But, <laughs> but, you know, if we stopped and actually read everything and compared everything like we wanted to, you mm. know, you'd be, you'd be stuck there for hours because it's just such a, a maze of confusion sometimes trying to work out well is that better is that higher in carbohydrate than that one has that got lower fat is mm -hmm. that yeah yeah so it's a real um it's overwhelming actually it is it is there's just so much so much to think about so what kind of things on food labels should we be watching out or looking out for? Well, we turn, there's, you know, the... yeah, there's, there's lots of different things. Well, the first thing, obviously, is there's lots of things on a food um, label that's required by law. And in particular, the first things are the nutrition information panel, which is the one with all the numbers, <laughs> um, and then the ingredients list as well. And I've just brought these two muesli bars as an example because the muesli bars are obviously different sizes. So how do you compare your apples with your apples or your muesli bar with your muesli bar. So you mean so, per serve when you yes, see that? Yeah, yes, the per serve, so they're a different size. So there's two different ways you can compare things and it's recommended that you do it per, with the 100 grams column because then you're comparing the same amount of one food to the same amount of another. Um, uh, so that's, that's a good tip. yeah, that's a, a good one. When you if you when you're looking at um, comparing the similar products in the supermarket, really good. I'd, I'd get, um, go for comparing the hundred grams column. Yeah, so that, that's just the first little tip, and that's one of the things that we do in the master classes. I brought along, I have hundreds of food labels that I have laminated. As you do. <laughs> Whoops, upside down. Yeah, so I hold one for yeah, you. Yeah, so um, that, that's one of the things we do in the in the master classes. Look at all these. Look at the so you can compare all the different nutrition analysis on the nutrition information panel and look at high sodium, look at carbohydrate, fat, that sort of thing. Mm. So that's a, a, a big one of our toys that we have in the, in the master classes. Um, but another couple of tricks that they have on food labels um, or something that might be quite interesting to people is um, if they say um, it's got a chocolate biscuit or it's a strawberry yogurt or something like that. Mm -hmm. Identify one of the products that's perhaps the, the flavour or the item that's um, selling the product. They have to say the percentage of that item in the ingredients list. So look out for that. It's really interesting. In this, in this yogurt, it's 6% strawberry. Oh. So um, yeah, fun, but you might it? you might find that particularly if you if you got a, a, like a, a chocolate biscuit or something like that. We're not talking about healthy food here. <laughs> but this is just for it's interest. It's a good example. Though. Yeah. It's a good example. Um, you know, you want to know. Oh, is there a, a speckle of chocolate in it, or am I getting value for money? So when you if it is identified like that, you know you can go to the ingredients list and next to chocolate in the ingredients list, it has to say the percentage in there. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. And for the um, for us to join in as part of the masterclass, yes. um, we can call you on your mobile, yes. or we can um, email you. It's as simple as that, yeah. isn't it? So the email address is coming up on the screen at some stage, mm -hmm. um, and also they can go to our website, and there's a link to the email address straight through there. So if it's if yeah, you, perfect. They miss it. Yeah. Okay, dokie. So allergens. Yes. What are allergens? I'm thinking so, not a halogen. <laughs> not a halogen. <laughs> it's an <a> allergen. <laughs> yeah. So um, allergens have to be labelled in a special way on food packaging. What, are, so, what is an allergen? So an allergen is something that could cause an allergy or an allergic reaction. Okay. So sometimes it might be something quite mild like a skin reaction or something like that. Possibly not considered mild if it's you having it. <laughs> yeah. But it can also of course be dangerous to, to life threatening sometimes as well, the reaction. So it has to be labelled in a specific way. Um, so we go through that in the master class, but um, a couple of the ways it can be labelled is either in it's in bold in the ingredients list or it's in brackets in the ingredients list. But if you know what you're looking for, then obviously a parent of a child who has an allergy will be wanting to know, OK, how do I look out for these things? Yeah, and another wonderful reason to head along. Now, yeah. um, the masterclasses are happening Thursday the 29th of October between 7 and 9, and yeah. Friday uh, 30th of October between 1 and 3. $45 per person includes a cough, coffee or tea and some cake. Good yeah. on you, love. Yep. Healthy cake. Oh, healthy cake, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. A little dollop or something, but anyway. Um, and and again, just to email you or go to, uh, I'll give you a call on your yes, mobile or something yeah. like that. Um, this week, though, our recipe will be the coconut chia seed pudding. Looking forward yes. to that after the break. Yes. That sounds Something a bit a yummy. Bit different. Yeah. And there we go. There's all the details for Nicola there. Nicola Freya at nourish.org.nz is her email. Thanks a lot. Good on you. You better hop on your bike and um, get out of the studio. But we're hopping on a bike very shortly. We're joined by the Motor Patrol. Remember this?
John O'Ponch could be in the studio after the break. Maybe not. See you soon. Joining me now, this is very cool indeed. They've actually got a motorbike in here. Sergeant Lockie Garrick, welcome. Pleased to be here. Yeah, it's very cool that you're here, and especially bringing one of uh, they look. This sounds a bit funny. It's like a TARDIS, though. They look bigger in person than yeah, they do out on the highway. There's a lot of equipment all over them, but uh, it's all vital. We need all of it. It's all handy. It is all handy, and that's a, I suppose the beauty of the motorbike. Can, um, what do you patrol? Is it the motorbike patrol or motor patrol? What do you call yourselves? Just, just the motorcycle squad. Motorcycle squad. Church. Yep. Um, that's a pure beautiful thing about it, is you can quickly get in and out, can't you? Whereas you know with four wheels, a bit different. Yeah, they're very versatile. Um, you get through small gaps. They're very uh, handy when it comes to things like VIPs. When you have VIP visits, oh, we need them for the front of the motorcades. Um, there's only two in Christchurch, but we try and get them around as much the, um, the district as possible. Yeah, which is really cool indeed. Um, let's talk about things though. Um, this summer, you know, people are probably, you know, there's a few chaps out there and ladies that are going, mm -hmm. I'd love to be on a motorbike this summer. Or they're bringing them out, dusting them off. What should they be thinking about? Well, yeah, you're right. When it comes to the good weather, that's when the bikes come out. Just yeah, like yeah. the sports cars on, on the weekends and Sundays and that sort of thing. Just quietly Bathurst's weekend. It is Bathurst. And I'm a keen supporter of Bathurst too, <laughs> by the way, as is my wife. <laughs> Good on you. Um, we just had a motorcycle um, expo event on this last weekend yeah. and we had probably well over a thousand people uh, come on. It was on yesterday. Probably over 600 motorcycles turned up. Mm. And the whole focus of that was to really get the Born again riders who are a bit like myself. Yeah. I ride a motorbike off duty. I've got a big uh, road bike, as well as people who are new to motorcycles, um, to really educate them and give them good ideas, make them think, concentrate, looking down the road because it's a nasty place out there. At the end of the day. And the boring stuff, the boring stuff that matters, like the warrant of fitness, the registration. You should be thinking about those things as well, not just pulling it out and hopping straight on. No, and it's easy to forget those sorts of things. A lot of people don't uh, ride uh, during the winter. We call them you know, the fair weather riders. They only come out in the spring, and, and by then, a lot of the times, those documents have expired. So in the uh, coming months, so everyone's aware, um, I've actually got to write operation orders in relation to Operation Mataki, which is a police uh, operation which focuses on those sorts of things, mm. um, generally on the open roads and the risky roads, like the state highways and the roads to Akaroa, which everyone loves on the Ooh. same... I like to get into those twisty corners and stuff, Do just you? like everyone else. Ugh. However, there's the risk oh, yeah. side of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that operation will be there to check the, the riders, make sure they're licensed for a start. Um, the <laughs> vehicles. Yeah, maybe the little, little bit, a little bit of a card you sort of, sort of, kind of need. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. Okay. Well, let's talk about the bike then. You know what? I'm gonna put an anarchy here. I'm actually gonna take out Doug from my ear. I'm actually gonna hop on. Do you think I can do it? Oh, do you think I can? Go. I'm gonna go. do this very discreetly. Look away, Nick. Don't get the camera too close with my skirt. Oopsie daisy. No, you can get on there. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Woohoohoo! A bit of power. Isn't it amazing? Crikey. Okay, let's get back to the motorbike. We've got to focus now because I just love power and speed. Um, if we are purchasing a motorbike this summer, what should we be thinking about? Not just the driving, but the whole package, the safety. I'm thinking of clothing as well. For riding on bikes here, because funny enough, we had this discussion yesterday. One of our members of the public came up to me and said, Why is it that leather is predominantly all black and that people wear black? Do they only have black cows or something? And I don't know the answer <laughs> to that one clearly. I haven't seen any pink cows but, just quietly. So. Yeah, visibility is definitely something that people need to keep in mind, not just motorcyclists themselves, but people who are driving cars need to be keeping an eye on cyclists because they're hard to see. They're mm. small, despite the bright lights and everything. All the time, motorcycles are being missed and often are being hit by cars. Um, well, that's it also. Um, the motor vehicles need to think of our motorcyclists as well, don't correct. you think? And need Absolutely. to be very conscious and looking in your mirrors. Yes, definitely. And, uh, the speed differential between a motorbike and a car often catches car drivers out. They accelerate very quickly, particularly these big ones. Mm. They brake very quickly and they can get through little gaps and that often can catch people unawares. Yeah. So definitely, mototorcycles have to be um, concentrating 100% and car drivers do too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we all know it's easy to get distracted and oh, there's those sure. on your cell phones who shouldn't be. Ugh, that were a distraction. Exactly. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. And uh, stereos and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Okay, and the thing is, as you said Lockie, you love your bikes. 
That's You're not trying to be a killjoy and like, no. you know, say, do no bikes. Just to be aware and take care. Defence courses would be a good thing to do as well. There and are, and there's really a number available. of courses in Canterbury that are available uh, to try and, you know, improve uh, rider um, skills. Mm. And it needs to be done. One yeah. of the scary stats, and you may not be aware of this, if you're involved in a crash and you're riding a motorbike, you are 19 times more likely to be injured than what oh. you are in a car. So the stats 19. are working against 19, 1, 9. So those stats are working against us and we need to do whatever we can to try and improve those stats for, for the right. riders. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure, not just because you're a, a fellow motorhead, Good on you. Absolutely. Bathurst this weekend, Bathurst. just quietly. I'm a little bit excited, a little bit excited about that. But thanks so much for bringing in, especially bringing this in. Is there a, can I push a button? Is there a, where's, where's the <laughs> No, the it's all turned off at the moment. It's probably a good thing, I would say, Not looking really? at your enthusiasm. It could blow you out. I know, exactly. <laughs> hey, stay with us after the break. There's more Canterbury Live. are one of the latest superfoods. They're high in protein and fibre and full of nutrients. And today we're using them to make a delicious breakfast. So breakfast, obviously the most important meal of the day, so it's really good to have some things that are a little bit different if you're wanting to, if, or if you're getting a bit bored with your standard, standard breakfast items. So chia seeds, uh, just little black seeds, and I'll tip some out into my hand to show you. And I know I'm from Aztec times, the actual word chair is actually, um, has a meaning of strength. And they're known for um, filling you up and giving you sustained energy. So um, that's, that's why the, the Aztecs use them and even now to this day they're used in that way. So what, what we're going to put together today is uh, a mixture with uh, chia seeds. It has quite a bit of chia seed in it, about a quarter of a cup, a, a cup of coconut milk, and we're going to add some berries and a little bit of nut, uh, uh, coconut, dried coconut as well. So it, it's a, a breakfast that includes all the important components to make it a complete breakfast. So, what I'm going to do is just add the coconut milk first, and you, you can use, um, there's an unsweetened variety of coconut milk, and I've tried it with that, but it just does need a little bit of sweetness to carry it through. So I've just got the, the original coconut milk uh, for, this, for this recipe that we're doing today. But you, as I say, you could use the unsweetened if you wanted to. And then we add to that a quarter of a cup of the chia seeds. So just add those in and you can see they almost seem waterproof when you add them into the mix and you have to give them a good stir and they start to just, it almost starts to thicken before your eyes and you just let that sit for about half an hour and they start, start, it starts to thicken the mix and it starts to go a little bit gel like just by the way the seeds interact with the coconut milk. So normally I would leave that for about half an hour, but today we're just going to be doing it a bit quicker. Right. So, what I usually do is make these up in jars. I think the jars are a really cute way to dis display the, the food. So I usually put just some berries in the bottom, and you could use any frozen berries. These are defrosted, but I just use frozen blueberries and you can you can make it with the blueberries actually frozen that still still works out just fine so I put quite a few in the bottom there because it's important as part of your breakfast that you do have um, some uh, fruits or vegetables in there so that's your fruit component of your breakfast so just add top that up and then you just pop that in the fridge overnight and that sets to what we've got here, which is a lovely set uh, breakfast. And then what I do is top that with a few more blueberries. And it's nice to have plenty on top there. And you can see that's uh, set to a nice consistency so that when you eat that, you're going to get the beautiful combination of the nice, nice fresh fruit 
and the, the thick sort of custard that comes with the pudding as well. And so because it's got coconut milk in it, I like to just add a little bit of desiccated coconut that's been toasted on the top. And that is perfect for a breakfast. So if, if you're getting a little bit bored with your standard breakfast, give this a try. You'll really be pleasantly surprised. And don't forget, for the masterclasses for reading labels, you just need to email or call Nicola. And we've got the details here if you missed them, or they'll be up online later on. Radio after the break, finance man, Brent Lattimore is here, and the blue bearded lady. Well, seriously, we're not actually worrying about a rich man's world. Just living comfortably mm -hmm. would be a good thing to aim for, wouldn't it? Good start. In this world? Good start. It would be a good start, wouldn't it? It would be it? a good start. And doing that would be living within your means. Living within your means. So, I mean, Sounds last, foreign these days, know, though, doesn't and it? And it is hard, I must admit. It is hard because you're always surrounded by the adverts, the TV adverts, by this no interest for 24 months, mm. which I think is now 36 months, and that always gets extended out. But to, today, I thought it's probably more aimed at maybe professional, young professional couples and saving one income. Is that dinkies? They call it two income. It's called dink oh, or something. Double yes. income, no um, kids. Not sure, but something yeah. like that. Double yeah, income, yeah, yeah, yeah. Double, double income, income, no, no kids, kids yet. Yeah. So yeah. those types. Right, those types. <laughs> those types. <laughs> those types don't have trouble. <laughs> it was okay. we, and I've got a couple of stories to share. Actually, and the hmm. first one is where um, I had a young couple come and see me, and they had some debt, but they had two very good incomes. So we worked through their whole scenario mm. of, of how much they can save, how much they can't, and, and we worked out that they can live off one income and save the other. Oh, so that's wonderful. it was great. And so when they left, they promised me they would do it. Now they came back two years later and they'd done it and they'd saved their deposit, they'd cleared all their debt, and they were now ready to purchase their first home. In just two years? In two years they'd managed to do it. Now, now they were on good incomes, and when I mean good incomes, maybe 50,000, 60,000 each. Um, but still, they did it. They lived off one income of, of 50 grand and saved completely the other. And then when they came back in two years' time, they're probably one of the clients I'm proud of the most. Oh, you need to have a little they, framed picture of them in the, in well, the they office. they listened. Someone listened <laughs> to me. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they came and they bought their first home. Now they've been in there about three years now, and everything's great, going well, paying it down, just brilliant. Yeah, we love that. Good and the story. Other sto oh, and the other story, story. That's a good story. And the other one, these people already had a house, and they'd bought sensibly. So you know, we've talked about before about people buying really nice houses and mm. not really being able to afford to pay them. These, this young couple had bought uh, a, a nice home, just a two-bedroom unit, which mm -hmm. is what I think people should do. And they, they were on both on good incomes as well, but they were, were wasting their money a little bit. So once again, we, we said, well, you can actually pay this mortgage and live off one income and save the rest. And, and the rest, and that whole, that whole income was going straight off the mortgage. So we're able to put that straight off the loan. So they were able to reduce their loan. And it was a similar sort of time frame, actually, two years as well. They were able to reduce it so quickly. And they've now just moved into pretty much their dream home and oh. were able to keep the other house as a rental property, purely from the fact that they just worked hard, they put all that income off the, their existing mortgage, got the loan down to a manageable limit, which would enable them to take that next step forward. There is so, a common thread between both of them though, is that they came to you. Yeah, and discipline as well, because down. you can give them all the advice, mm. and, and some people this won't work, but at the end of the day, I've been around long enough to sort of pick out people's spending personality, I suppose, and, and these people, both of them were, were great. They just needed that little bit of direction, and, and that's all I supplied, and at the end of the day, it was their, their um, discipline that made it happen, and, you know, and both those, and, and there are probably a couple more stories I have like that, but, you know, it's, you, you become quite proud of them in some ways. You go, well, you've done oh, it, you know, you've, you've actually huge. done it. the first one, two years to yeah, do all two of years. that. Yeah, it was that's great. Phenomenal. It was, they did exceptionally well, and, and very, very happy, and always very thankful. But it's not too late, though, is Never it? Never too late. If you go, oh, look, that's well, lovely for them. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha. Yeah. <laughs> but how about me? Poor yeah. woe me. 
But it's not too late, though, no, to actually look at your finances. Come and have a chat. Come and see me. I mean, it's 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 just we just sit down, we talk about it, we go through it, what you can and can't do, how much income you've got left over, and just set you on that path to. You have to be honest, though. You have to be honest with me. You have to be very honest <laughs> with me, and you have to give me your bank statements too. <laughs> And I'll know exactly what you what you get up to. How many coffees you have? Oh, actually, that's amazing. How many people? How much money people do spend on coffees? But well, I do go well, through you them. You could quietly bring it up here at CTV <laughs> and just quietly, lovely. There's a fair coffee bound well, of coffee that's spent here. We see because people don't draw out cash anymore. They don't no. go to the teller machine and draw out a hundred bucks and just go and use that. They yeah. everything's FPOS, whether it's two dollars, three dollars. So you can pick up their spending habits very, very easily. And especially with PayPal. Yeah. yeah. Don't even think about the numbers. Just get. Yeah. And if it doesn't decline, it's all good. <laughs> there we go. Facebook, Hermit, help for first home buyers. But even if you've got a home and you need some help, Brent Correct. won't turn your way at all. Very cool indeed. And I think what's the end page details for Brent as well um, with his Facebook page. And if we, if we just go Focus Financial, we can find you like that yes, as well, correct. can't we? Yes, correct. Yes, yeah, so that's really it. There we go. Focus Financial Group, phone 0800 334 338. And the website is wfgl.co.nz. Radio now. Now I have a wonderful interview with the blue bearded lady. The flower has landed here. Mm -hmm. I'm joined by Pippi Aisha Evans, the blue bearded lady, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Canterbury Live. That was just incredible watching you there. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's wonderful. But you started here in Canterbury at Circo Arts. Yes. And for those that knew it, it was at CPIT behind there, a beautiful mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. Can you, when you think back, can you imagine that you'd been out on a stage and doing it for yourself? Or? I guess. For a long time it's been a dream of mine to do a solo show but I've it's really scary and it's it's much easier to do one off little things rather than a big show all by yourself so it kind of is a dream and it's amazing to come back to Christchurch to be performing as my debut season in New Zealand as well it's really exciting so well tell us yeah. about the persona though of the blue bearded lady just for those at home thinking why is this gorgeous creature of blue paint on her chin, like a beard? So the story itself is based on a fairy tale called Bluebeard about a young woman who marries a rich older man and eventually she discovers that he's murdered all his previous wives and she is next. But I like this idea of her becoming a bearded lady through that fairy tale, it's this mythical world that she lives in, and she's got a, a bunch of different personas within the story that I tell. Yeah. Um, and it's also connected to that sideshow element of the bearded lady, a little bit of old school circus there too. Old school, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like all the, those eccentric sort of, of weird and wonderful characters. And we've got some wonderful shots of you now. You I make it look effortless, Pippi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but is that the key for, yeah. for the audience? Yeah, I think so. To be doing something that is actually really highly technical and takes a lot of strength that I've spent more than 10 years working on to make it look effortless and then the audience just sees something ideally that is just beautiful rather than seeing that effort in the performance. And is there a storyline for the show? Now, you're performing yes. at the Body Festival. Yes. Um, it's at Hagley College in the open stage um, this weekend, the 8th and 9th of October. Yeah, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, Thursday, yeah. Friday. Um, can you please tell me, 
is there a story along your performance? Yes, something that I've worked a lot on is really integrating the circus element into the story. So I'm using that fairy tale of Bluebeard as the basis of telling the story about this woman. And it's about, about her life. Great. Yeah. So what are some of the acts, and we've just seen some there, mm -hmm. with the hoop and yes. the silks. Yes. What will we be experiencing so when we come along? I do stilt walking. So I, I pair on stilts, it's a little bit like this, but twice as big. And, and with the aerial hoop and the fabric that you saw in the, in the beginning show reel images, and on a web rope as well. So what is a web rope? It's, oh, it's a rope, basically a rope that I climb up and I wrap around my body and do drops on and then get spun on as well. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> the silking, a question for you, it's not just any silk, is that no, what I No, there's a couple of specific fabrics that are rated and strong enough to use. So it's fabric, yeah. But it is yeah. just a fabric you're using. It's up to you and what you do with your feet and your, uh, your strength. Yeah to actually keep you going yeah, that's and right. falling. Yeah. My goodness. Tell us though, for those that are thinking about getting into the arts mm -hmm. and you aspire, probably pink, I'm thinking pink's probably one that actually really put it out there, didn't mm -hmm. she, with her silk, yeah. silk work and that. Where can we go to now in New Zealand without Circo Arts? So in New Zealand, in Christchurch, there are some classes run through the Christchurch Circus Trust. Mm -hmm. And in Wellington, there is another class, classes called the Wellington Circus Trust. There are a few different classes throughout the country. Um, yeah, not, not a big school except for today and Wellington has just started a tertiary class course in circus. So that's a new thing that's just beginning there, which is exciting. It's entertainment, it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, Vegas could be somewhere that you could be in. I've got friends who've performed in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a, it's yeah. a 24 7 town, isn't it, of it entertainment. Is. There must yeah. be some room for the blue bearded lady somewhere. It could be, it could be actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's go over again this weekend. So you'll see the beautiful Bluebed Lady at the Hagley College, the open stage. Mm -hmm. It is open, um, oh, it was happening on Friday and Saturday, the 8th and 9th at 7.30pm. So Thursday and Friday. Oh, Thursday and Friday, right, that's correct, the 8th mm -hmm. and 9th. Um, and it's the Body Festival. And to purchase tickets, how can we do that? You can go to the Body Festival website, yes. body.co.nz, and also there's tickets online at Dash Tickets. Excellent. So you can look up the Blue Bearded Lady on the Body Festival website or the Dash tickets. Good on you. Thanks Great. so much, Pippi. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Now, after the break, though, the Lincoln Queen, Margaret, is here talking real estate, and the ever colourful artist, Ira Mitchell Kirk, is painting it. Oh, many colours, not just black. See you soon. And welcome you home could be Margaret Reeve, Bellamy's Real Estate, out at Lincoln, couldn't you? Yes. And I'm sure you'd love to welcome them to join you as a resident out there. Oh, certainly would. <laughs> certainly would. Now, yesterday was something quite special happening out at Lincoln. Yes, it was a very exciting day. It was really very exciting because we actually were open to probably a lot of people who have made a lot of inquiries about the village, but they really wanted to see what a property was going to look like. And of course, yesterday they could. So there was a lot of interest out there yesterday. Getting up close and personal. Yes, yes. And I guess picture painting, do you think? Yes. As well, Margaret? Yes, yeah. No, it's, it's good. Yeah, really a big good. smile on your face. Yeah. And when are you hoping to be in your home? Uh, they are saying before the end of November, probably the second week in November. Just in time for Cup Week. Absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. Champers around at Margaret's. Yeah, sounds like <laughs> it. Sounds good. Hey, let's look at some of the artist impressions of some of the homes that you could purchase out there. So let's have a look. This is the Earl apartment. I like this. This is really neat, especially if you're downsizing. Exactly, exactly. And that, that one is actually going to be in our stage three. That's so neat. And, and the privacy is still there with that wall in between, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely, yes. But still there. Yes, Great. It Next up is the Edward Villa. Yes, they are, well under, they are actually well underway. They're all finished inside, uh, just now waiting for the grounds to be done. And, um, and then the residents will be moving in before the end of October. God, how many bedrooms do they have? Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms, yes. Oh, uh, I like that. I love uh, on the end, all the glass. Yes. So it's really there to capture those pockets of sun. sun. You, can, exactly. you can have your cheeky little sherry out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Looking at people right. walking past. 
Okay, and this one here is the Gerald Villa. Yes, yes, and that is, they're finished too, and there's people who have purchased those, so they must be really looking forward to the uh, middle of October to be uh, in, their, in their new home. And do we have to be a resident, or could we actually potentially purchase these to rent? Yes, you can. Yes, you can invest in them. Yes, just somebody needs to be 55. Okay, so... 55, the, because right. they're unit titled, freehold, it's their own home. They okay. own it. There is a body corporate with it that will look after the grounds, look after the uh, security of it, etc. Oh, we love this. Mm. This is the James Villa? Yes, the James. Now the James... And how is, many bedrooms is this one? It'll be two, the same. As they've all got, all those ones have got two bedrooms. Okay, radio. They've all got two bedrooms. Look at it, I just love it. Next up is Morris, the Morris that, Cottage. That's lovely. That's cute. That is the largest of all of the properties. And again, two bedroom or three? No, that's three that's bedrooms three. and two bathrooms and double garage. I love it. And that property is uh, 515,000. So it's pretty good. That is so affordable. It really is. 515. 15, that's the most expensive one. And remember, everyone, this is freehold. It is it freehold. Is freehold. They're not leasehold like a lot of these villages. Yes. They're freehold, which is great. Next up, Robert. That's my style. That's mine. Is that yours? That's my well, style. Well, that's the style you're going for. Yes. So is that the linear boards? Is that the yes, a blend is. of linear yes, and... Yes, it um, is. And, and, and a concrete And concrete. Uh, the concrete. Yes. The concrete plaster. Yes. Yeah. yes. You can tell I'm building, can't you? Okay. See, I'm leaning. Okay. So you are. Can't even know. Yeah. Okay. And look at that patio there. Yeah. Picture painting. Nice. Are you going to be near the golf course? Well, you are near the golf course. I am. Are you a stone Just a throw? nice little walk down, oh, down the alleyway. With trundler. With the trundler. Uh -huh. Not a golf cart. Guy. Oh no, don't need oh, a golf cart. You could be cart. a Speedy Gonzalez, I could see you actually, <laughs> in a bit of a golf cart. Okay, for any of these though, they just simply need to contact you, Margaret, and just they have do. a chat, don't they? They do, they do. They just need to call me and and it'll be really good because I'll be able to take them out and show them a, f a finished product. So from here on, it's going to be a lot easier for people because they'll just be able to walk in and see it. And the village and visualize. will visualise. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the grass will be down, it's just going to be really lawn, so it's going to be really, really easy. It's going to look really stunning before between now and the end of uh, November. And let's go back to the tips of what's so wonderful at Bellamy's is there's no fixed fee. That's right, that's the real estate company behind it. And yes, we don't charge a commission at all, it's all on an hourly rate. So they just pay for the hours that we actually work for their property. It's too simple. It's really um, simple. A conversation, no fixed fee, and you could be out there in the beautiful Lincoln in one of those wonderful homes. Thank you so much, Margaret. Oh, wonderful it's a seeing you. And fingers crossed you're in that home. Oh, right in time for cut week. Absolutely. For champers, put your little absolutely. fascinator on. You'll absolutely. be rocking it. Oh, yes. Can't wait. <laughs> Good on you. That's Bellamy's. Um, for um, Margaret's mobile, it's 021 998 428. The website, really easy. Bellamy's.co.nz. And now it's time for Ira Mitchell Kirk with October's Painting. Well, we're being transported to Wanaka in October. Amazing, Ira. This painting is just delightful. Thank you. It's not very in season, but hey. Yeah, but when you think of Wanaka, you actually yeah. think of this yeah. image, though, don't you? I do, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but one thing that's amazing about it and is so cool is actually the original is a finalist in the Otago Arts Awards. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, I've just been down south and thought I'd enter into that. Uh, and this one's a finalist. I think there's about 40 of us. Uh, so I go down um, 16th, yeah, 16th of October for the awards night, which will be nice. It'll be fantastic. Yeah. But it is just. You know, it's quite simplistic. It's this new style of painting that you've been you've mm, exposed mm. us to the last couple of months. Yeah. Um, and I guess Wanaka drew you to use it again. Or? Yeah, it's um, it's an abstraction of the forms and the colours. So it's it's almost like an impression of what's there, what I can remember in its simplest way. But you can still recognise where it is. Yeah, just, I think it's just that golden colours yeah. you think of the Central golden Otago, the isn't it? Yeah. So you're very lucky at home because you will get the chance to actually win this painting for October. Thanks, Ira. Uh, moving on, keeping down the Central Otago, you've been working at the Garston School. Yeah, so I've uh, written a rural programme and I've been going to different schools. Garston was one of them. Um, now tell us for those. Oh. I know where Garston is because I'm a South okay. girl. It's in the so middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> on the way to Invercargill. There's 30 children, that's the whole school. Um, I went to Glen Orkies, same again, 30 children. 
and uh, just trying to connect them with master artists. So they'd go out and paint their scenery how Van Gogh saw it or how Monet saw it and then make them realise that they're not that far away from those people really. Not at all. Not it's all at achievable. All. I think we've got yeah. a lovely um, picture actually of the children at, at work in there. It's such a lovely setting down in Garston. Yeah. There it is there. We're what out um, they're out there measuring, getting things in perspective with their little <laughs> pencils, how to get their landscapes done. Can all children some say that you it has to be in you to be an artist. But can anyone paint? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of tricks and things to make it very easy. And, and I know that because I teach the whole school and they all produce amazing, technically correct artwork by the end of the day. And I guess there's just different, I suppose, different aspects that they all draw and they have different visions and they see different, like we all do, we all do see different things in different yeah. scenery, don't we? Absolutely. After they know the technical things, then they do their thing. So I just give them the hints and the tricks how to do it. It's the same with adults as well. And then that gives them the freedom to do anything they want. Well, carrying on to the well, you are mentoring those children, but you're also mentoring adults. And you are gracing the cover of a magazine, mm. Epic Mentors. I think we've got a shot of that too, looking fab and purple. Oh, thank you. Um, how did this come about, Ira? Um, uh, Emily, uh, Emma, sorry, came to me and just asked me if I'd been on the cover. She'd heard that I'd done a lot of community work and I uh, was doing quite a bit of mentoring and just asked me to what my story was. And what's the magazine about? Um, every two months they have someone that people find inspiring um, and apparently I'm one of those. <laughs> You're giggling. And uh, yeah, and just ask about your journey and, and what you do. So I just talked about a lot of the community work that I do and, and why I do what I do. Um, and you know, we've spoken before about how I split my day into teaching, creating and giving back. Yeah, so that's what I talked about. It's giving back, I don't know, it, is that compulsory? We hear a lot more of it these days about giving back. Mm. Is it essential now in yes. business? Um, I've heard that charity has been cut by 50%. What people are giving, whether that's because people don't have cash in their pockets like they used to do. Mm. Um, so I think we all, everyone else needs to up their game. We've all got an extra 10 minutes in the day where we can give. Because it's not down to also down to the dollar though. Giving no, back, that's no, the key, isn't it? No. So, like this weekend, or the coming weekend, I'll be collecting for Pink Ribbon. I mean, who can't do that? It's just a couple of hours in and the I day. I think they're only asking, they still are asking for more volunteers, and they're only asking for one hour. Yeah, yeah. If you can give more, yeah. well, that's fantastic, but they're only asking for one. So, where will you be, lovely? Collecting I'll be Pink Ribbon. down at South City. <gasps> we hear that. You can actually pop down to South City, do a little bit of shopping, and give a few coins to Ira for a pink ribbon. You can spot her there and compliment her mm. on all the wonderful art. What's coming up next for you, sweetheart? Uh, writing more rural programs. Uh, so now I have sponsorship to set up. You've, the thing is, you've got to get these things going, prove that it works and people want you, and then people will say, right, we'll, we'll help you out now. You've got to prove yourself first. So I've got a couple of weeks in Queenstown. Again, uh, the council sponsored me space down there. Brilliant. Um, working up my next thing on my list is to show in the States again. So I'm working on that at the moment, putting some pins on the map to decide where I'm going to go. Well, I look forward to seeing November. Now, November, mm. I'm not sure what will inspire November. It is Cup Week and the show and all that there. So we'll see what you you bring into us all the best travel safe thank you and thanks again for this beautiful beautiful painting right stay with us after the break how's your relationship is it a bit rocky is it smooth where well, we talk to the professional candy And there we are, Karen Deegan joins me now. Now today, it's a big, big topic <laughs> that a lot of people have been faced or maybe going through in relationships. Start things off, why do people stay in relationships that they are unhappy in? Well, it's mainly because they have fears, doubts, worries about stay about leaving you know there could be for instance if your partner has put you down for a number of years you could feel that you're not deserving of anyone else or not good enough for anyone else because they've made you feel that way or we can make ourselves feel that way sometimes we can be harder on ourselves than anyone else <coughs> can you know we can have these thoughts in our head that make ourselves feel not good enough we could have fears around leaving because change is huge isn't it 
Yeah, well, it is. And, yeah. and especially the longer we've been in a relationship, the harder the change gets. So it's really, people stay because they have limiting beliefs often about themselves and perhaps negative expectations about how hard it might be, and also emotions are in the way. I'll give you an example of that. Mm -hmm. um, a man sent his girlfriend to me once. Um, he was hoping to make her his fiance, and he said to Bizarre. me, yeah, "Yeah, he said to me, she's got a fear of commitment. Can you help her?" And I said, "Well, you know, yes, I can." So anyway, she comes. Ask her after a bit of questioning. Turns out she hasn't got a fear of commitment. She's got extreme guilt over leaving him, which is what she actually wants to do. <gasps> I know that's awkward. Awkward. But the thing is, the person in front of me is my client, and yeah. I have to do what's right for them, regardless of who's paying. And I actually get the situation a lot, someone else will pay for someone to come. The person in front of me is my client. She got what she needed, i.e. the guilt was cleared, she left him. Oh, Karen! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Jeepers creepers! Yeah, and you know, that happens a lot where people feel guilt. I remember another client I had, she'd been in the same marriage for 20 years, and whenever she came for a session, she was complaining about him all the time and saying all these things that she didn't like. And I could see she was miserable. And I said to her, why are you actually, you know, staying in this relationship? And she said, um, she said, every time I bring up the subject of, of leaving or splitting up, he gets really unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to her, have you noticed that you're putting oh his goodness. happiness before your own? And, and she said, oh, I hadn't thought of that. And I said, why do you think you're doing that? What's your job in this relationship? She said, my job's to make him happy, has been for 20 years. And it, so that was a hard habit to break. Yeah. And so when I help people to clear, using EFT of course, clearing these limiting beliefs in this case, that she has to put him first and it's her job to make him happy, once that's out the way, people can do what they really feel is right for them. So it's actually a bit of house cleaning, like a spring clean. Spring clean. Spring clean of emotions and limiting emotions. beliefs. And then it should, it should reveal itself. Mm. Um, so, do people come to you though also wanting you to make the decision for them? <laughs> it's funny, often people do come to me to, they want help making a decision, not necessarily in a relationship. Mm. I've even had people come to me, they want to help me to help them make a decision in um, a business, uh, you know, buying a business or leaving a business. And, you know, I don't give people advice. What I do is I, I think people come with an inner knowing of what's right for them. You know, we call it our subconscious, our mm. soul self, our higher self, call it whatever you like. We've got, there's a part of us that already knows the answer. Right. But normally we have no idea what the answer is because it's clouded with emotions, clouded with fears, clouded with limiting beliefs. And when I clear those out the way, like that lady who had the, the guilt over leaving, we clearly know, without me giving anyone advice, what the right thing is. What's a tip? for us then in a relationship from Karen to Tegan? <laughs> well I always think Gandhi always used to say, be the change you want to see in the world. So I like to change that and see, but say, be the change you want to see in the relationship. Do the things that you want to do that you know you would like the other person to change. You be that change and do those things. And um, as you know, I've got a book coming out um, mm -hmm. in November, Andrea, and there's lots of tips in the book about how to communicate your needs, wants and expectations to your great to your um, partner, how to set boundaries for behaviour and how to clear yourself of these things that are holding you back. A great Bible to have with yes. you, to keep you on track as well. Um, at the end of the day though, in a relationship, it takes two mm. to have a relationship, yes. doesn't it? It's yes. not just down to one mm. person. That's right, and sometimes the other person isn't willing to change, and that's when we have to enforce our boundaries, and that's when we have to make a decision. Is this all right for the rest of my life? And if the answer's no, then you might even need some help to get yourself emotionally strong enough to leave, and that's where I come in. And that's it, isn't it? That's it, getting yourself emotionally strong. Yes. And it's okay, because a lot of people go through it. <laughs> Don't they? they do They're not normal. Good on you, Karen. That's set free with EFT, emotional freedom techniques. You can call Karen on 03 332 0526. Wonderful website, very, very interactive. Uh, setfree.co.nz. Some great tips from Karen. Thank you so much, mm. sweetheart. You're now, welcome. on Wednesday, Northlands Mall, join me. Very cool. Great things happening there. Diane Ramsey, Anthony Goth is in the building, and Phyllis Brown. Have a fantastic Monday. Look forward to seeing you Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. I'll share this love I find with everyone We'll sing and dance to Mother Nature's songs I don't want this feeling to go away